What's up guys? So here at Driver Motorsports, you know that we love us some VIP cars. But what is a VIP car? Right? So today we're gonna jump into the history, knowledge, and the qualifications of what is a true VIP car. Interestingly enough, there's not really a true definition of what a VIP car is. It's not like you can go to Webster's Dictionary and type in VIP car and get a definition. This style really developed out of being anti-authoritarian from its conception, but from history and the internet and a lot of old YouTube videos, we know what a VIP car is. VIP car is a modified JBM big body four door sedan with, that's fitted with aftermarket wheels, coilovers, air ride, and a plethora of other interior and exterior modifications. In Japan, this is known as Bipu. So there's a lot of different subcategories of VIP cars, uh, but we're not gonna get into that today. Today, we're really gonna be focusing on the true JDM VIP Bipu car. Now, the vast majority of these VIP cars are really centered around two makes, Nissan and Toyota. Uh, for Nissan, you're looking at cars like the SEMA, the Cedric, the Gloria, uh, the President, and there's plenty more for Toyota, the Crowns, uh, the Majestas, the Celsius, the Centuries, and plenty more like the Aristos, and we could go down the list. Uh, but that doesn't exclude makes like Honda and Mazda and Mitsubishi, uh, but for the most part, you're really centered around Nissan and Toyota. Now, before we get into the real qualifications of what makes a car a VIP car, let's talk a little bit about the history and how we even got here. Commonly, VIP car origins were tied to the Japanese mafia known as the Yakuza. The Yakuza are members of a Japanese crime syndicate that were founded back in the 17th century. Now, the Yakuza typically were running around in like Mercedes Benz or BMW German luxury cars, but needed something to kind of fly under the radar with. So they turned to the JDM market and started buying up all of these brand new, super luxurious Nissan and Toyotas that were also bridging into that market at the time. Now, if you're in the Yakuza and you've got a ton of extra money for all your extracurricular activities, uh, you're gonna spend some of that money on your car. So they started taking money and buying these luxurious wheels and modifying the suspension, putting window tint on so that you can't see who it is driving down the road. And all of these things kind of turned into a style. Now, besides the Yakuza origin, street racers in the 90s were really getting cracked down on by the police for street racing, obviously, because it's illegal. But they really wanted to be part of the car scene and still mob around the streets with their friends, so they kind of took a play out of the Yakuza playbook and mimicked their style. So while the Yakuza is credited with the origins of the VIP car scene, it was really the community that took it and gave it life. So eventually, a gentleman named Mr. Takatomi comes around the car scene and starts the first VIP car club called VIP Company. Uh, this guy would later go on to also start Junction Produce and become one of the biggest guys and the biggest OG in the VIP car scene, uh, but we'll get back to that in a little bit. But before all of that, a magazine called Young Auto Magazine took notice of the growing VIP car scene in Japan and really wanted to kind of publish it and throw some stuff out there to the people and their readers about it, but really didn't have a name for it. So they decided to call it VIP Club. Now, one of the publishers at Young Auto Magazine went out on his own and started his own magazine called VIP Car. Have you heard of it? We have, obviously, because we have it. But the rest is history. Now the VIP car scene is on the map and it has its own publication and it's growing. So, in the coming years, the VIP scene grew extensively with the help of a bunch of aftermarket companies. Companies like Junction Produce, Impul, Aimgain, Garson, there's a ton of them. Uh, now, while all these products and all these companies are very different from each other, they all had the same common goal in mind, and that is luxury. So you may be saying to yourself at this point, I know what platform I can use, but what mods do I need to make to make it a true VIP car? Well, that can be a little bit tricky because just like music and the car scene, um, everything has a ton of subgenres and anything with a bunch of subgenres gets really convoluted pretty quickly. But there's one main theme involved with all of them 
and that's what I just said, luxury. These cars are not a thousand horsepower street cars. Um, they're built to mob, not race. So while there are some exceptions and there are some fast VIP cars, for the most part, the engine bays are left untouched and it's really the exterior and interior modifications that take precedence. Common modifications that you'll see on a VIP car are big wheels, uh, commonly big face wheels or fat spokes. Um, you're gonna see interior modifications like glasses and VIP tray tables and bottles and chandeliers and pillows and seat belts and seat covers and steering wheels, uh, exterior modifications like aero, uh, suspension modifications as far as arms and coilovers and air ride and then lighting modifications like headlights interior starlight headliners LED interior lights underglow puddle lights the list goes on and on but the common theme again with all of it is adding luxury to an already luxury car luxury plus luxury equals VIP so as I've mentioned the VIP game is all about adding luxury to luxury you take a luxury car to begin with and add more luxurious things to it. So companies like Garson who make interior accessories are commonly enshrined in Swarovski crystals. So you're going to see shift knobs with crystals on them, rear view mirrors with bedazzled crystals on them. And the list goes on for Garson. There's a ton of products that they make. For Junction Produce who make Aero, they also make amazing interior products like window curtains to block out the haters. Didn't see you there. I was too busy blocking out the haters. Uh, you've got seat covers, you've got neck pillows, pillows for the rear seat, tray tables, the list goes on and on. But again, it's all about adding more luxury. So as far as exterior modifications, even the companies that make these aftermarket Aero kits for these cars, you're not seeing wild flares, you're not seeing aggressive lines. Uh, the companies like Wall, Junction Produce, Aimgain, Impul, they all focus around the same thing. It's adding elegance to the car without disrupting the body lines. So you're gonna see smooth surfaces, flowing body panels, rather than aggressive flares and crazy overs and stuff like that. Now, like I mentioned before, there's a ton of subgenres in the VIP game, but it's important to understand a few definitions first. <laughs> Bipu, this is what we call VIP. It is VIP in Japanese. But if you say VIP in Japan, they're probably not gonna understand what you're saying. Now the second one is Soraichi. And this is for the fitment boys, right? This is perfect fender to wheel fitment, sitting hella flush, um, super low, but not tucking wheel, just sitting right on it, right in between the lip and the wheel in some places. Uh, but that's like the perfect fitment i.e. the Hello Flush Boys. Sarauchi, now this is for the Slam Boys. This is for the guys that want to tuck fender over wheel, um, and that means some pretty extensive suspension modifications. Uh, in some cases, moved floorboards or uh, no floorboards at all. Ani Kien, now this is what they call demon camber. So this is the guys with crazy camber, uh, you commonly see videos of these guys leaving street meets or car meets and trying to jump exits and entrances and just flying through them, uh, jumping them in some cases or getting stuck. Uh, these guys are super slammed and uh, their cars are pretty much undrivable, but they still look sick. And the last definition is sushi. It's what's for lunch. So I'm going to go find normal damn. Sorry guys, uh, that guy sucks. There are a ton of different ways to build a VIP car. It can be simple and clean, or it can be hella flush with crazy camber. But the same thing rings true. It's gotta be luxurious and it's gotta have some class. Now it is possible to build a VIP car out of a USDM car. So Infiniti and Lexus, it's still Nissan and Toyota, uh, but they're still luxurious cars and they're luxury cars to begin with. So you can build a VIP, a true VIP car out of one of these cars. Now here's where I may hurt some feelings. It's not technically possible for you to take your Audi S8 or A8, I don't know Audis, or your BMW 7 Series and turn it into a VIP car. It can be a VIP styled car, but it can't be a true VIP car. Even the VIP styling really makes its way into drifting with guys that like to drift slammed with big face wheels, like Euro lines on their car, Ed. 
So you can put VIP styling on pretty much anything. Even a lot of American classic cars have adopted that styling as of late. But it's important to the sanctity of the true VIP kings to keep the true VIP cars separate. So instead of saying this is my VIP uh, Chrysler 300, let's say this is my VIP style Chrysler 300. You get what I'm saying? Now I'm not talking you out of going out here and building a VIP inspired or styled 7 Series BMW because that's super sick and I really want one. But let's just agree that if it's a VIP car, it is what we've listed in this video. In summary, VIP is the ultimate flex and that's really the point. It's inclusive, it's niche, it's class, and it's luxury. And it's for everybody, as long as you play by the rules. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you're looking to get into a VIP car of your own, we have a ton for sale. You can check out some of the cars that we've sold, some of the cars that we have incoming, and some of the cars that we have for sale on our website or on our YouTube. And if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.